Deep in southern Africa, a mighty river snakes through untamed wilderness. Its vast floodplains are a magnet for wildlife. In the dry season, animals travel great distances to reach this oasis. And during droughts, space and resources are at a premium. But every animal has its place along the banks of the mighty Chobe River. It's winter, the dry season in northern Botswana. But the Chobe River is in flood. Fed by rain that fell in the distant Angolan highlands during the summer, this is now the only water for miles around. At this time of the year, great herds travel from far and wide, timing their arrival with the floods. 12,000 buffalo congregate along the water's edge, while more than 7,000 plains zebra arrive from lands further south. Jobe's bird life is a wonder unto itself. More than 450 bird species fill the airspace. 3,000 white-faced whistling ducks from all over sub-Saharan Africa gather here. And they're not the only ones. Collared Pratton calls migrate from all corners of the continent. In Chobe, they merge into giant swarming flocks, making the most of the resurgent insect life following the floods. At this time of year, the Chobe River provides food enough for all. The river's annual pulses keep Chobe in a constant state of flux. The Chobe River is a section of the great Kwando River which originates in the Angolan highlands in the east, flowing for 450 miles before merging with the mighty Zambezi in the west. The stretch of river forming the border between Namibia and Botswana in the Chobe National Park is called the Chobe. Away from the river, conditions are desperate. There's been no rain here for months. And food is scarce. The dry grass is poor grazing. And with all other water sources drying up, the river is the only option. At this time of the year, 
more than 45,000 African elephants, nearly 10% of the world's population, congregate along the banks of the Chobe River. And this herd has traveled more than 125 miles to arrive with the flood. The oldest female, or matriarch, leads the rest, following ancient migration routes, knowledge that's been passed to her from generation to generation. Their priorities are keeping cool in the scorching heat, while also staying hydrated and finding enough food. This calf is less than six months old. His family is seasoned at traveling to these parts. But this is his first time in the land of plenty. And every experience is new and exciting. Not all animals are such intrepid travelers. And they stay year round. Roughly 200 hippopotamus call the Chobe home. Hippos live in water deep enough to submerge themselves, avoiding dehydration. The pod spends almost two-thirds of its day in the river. But this is not where they eat. Hippos are grazers and emerge from the water to feed on the surrounding grasslands. He crops the grass with his dexterous lips, grinding it with massive molars. This mother is introducing her young calf to solids for the first time. Just a few months old, he's more used to suckling from his mom underwater. Chobe's waterlogged soils are far more fertile than the surrounding drylands. And hippos also crop the grass short, stimulating new growth, which attracts other visitors to the floodplains. These plains zebra have marched 300 miles from the seasonal plains further south to reach the Chobe while it floods. It's an ancient route, and as the crow flies, is the longest migration of any African mammal. By comparison, the meandering wildebeest and zebra of the Serengeti migrate less than half this distance. And after any great journey, there's nothing better than a good old scratch to get the dust out of one's coat. But the herds must keep their wits about them. This is lion country. <laughs> 
With so many falls, the herd can't afford to linger in the danger zone. Once across, they can drink in peace, because even the shallow river will slow a charging lion. With the zebra out of range, the lioness makes her way back to her pride. These Chobe locals relax in the shade of the riverine thicket. Lions don't often hunt during the heat of the day, preferring cooler conditions or the cover of darkness. Nine out of ten kills are made at night. Nearly half this family's kills are buffalo, but they're more famous for taking down even larger prey including hippos and elephants. These cubs are luckier than most. Elsewhere, half of all cubs born die before maturity. But in Chobe, where food is plentiful and their parents don't have to travel far to hunt, they're more likely to survive. The cubs are wide awake and aren't keen on the idea of a midday nap. Mom's an easy target. Driven by a killer instinct, her cub playfully goes for the jugular. In winter, the flooded river attracts hordes of herbivores, bringing the lion's prey right onto their doorstep. And the family are spoiled for choice. Puku antelope are a little too small for these lions' buffalo-sized appetite. But that doesn't mean they're safe in this predator-filled landscape. They live in marshy areas of Central Africa, and the lush Chobe floodplains are their southern limit. The calves wander from their mothers almost as soon as they've found their feet. But this comes at a cost. They're easy prey, and one in every two won't make it to five months old. The dominant ram is interested in this female, but she'll only be an estrus for 24 hours, so the window for mating is very short. Inhaling deeply, with his lips curled back, his vomeronasal organ samples the female's pheromones. His timing is a little off, and today is not their day. Puku stick to the narrow stretches of grassland between the river and nearby woodlands. This allows them to live alongside a close relative water buck. Recognizable by their white ringed backsides, water buck keep even closer to the water. At this time of the year, Chobe is overflowing with animals. Each one following its own way of life. But 
With so many species crowding together at such high numbers, competition for space and food can be fierce. A little bee-eater hunts from his favorite perch. Weighing just half an ounce, he's the smallest of his kind. Bee-eaters specialize in catching flying insects, but not always bees. He makes up to 40 hunting attempts in an hour and is successful 50% of the time. He hits his prey on the branch before swallowing it to avoid a nasty sting. The little bee-eater is not alone in his quest for flying prey. He shares the airspace with visiting relatives. Southern carmine bee-eaters migrate to Chobe during the floods. Four times lighter than his crimson counterparts, the little bee-eater's diminutive size allows him to catch insects too small for the carmines. So even with the extra company, He's still the king of his castle. As the sun climbs higher and temperatures push 100 degrees Fahrenheit, many animals take a break and head to the water to cool off. The elephants are topping up their tanks, staying hydrated. They suck up water with their versatile trunks and dispense it into their mouths, two gallons at a time. Even the baby has figured out this trick. Elephants need to drink 40 gallons of water a day. This is a struggle when they travel through the hot savanna. But once they get to Chobe, water is not a worry. And water isn't just for drinking. These two youngsters take time to play and cool off in the river. The hippos have also had enough of the heat. So they slip into the water where it's more comfortable. One of the harem is ready to mate. This fully grown hippo bull weighs nearly four tons, 
so mating on land can be a challenge. In the water, it's simply easier. Even though she's almost entirely submerged, she's still able to breathe through perfectly positioned nostrils. And if things get out of hand, she can even hold her breath for a comfortable five minutes. The female finally surfaces, and the bull celebrates his prowess. As the afternoon wanes on, more of Chobe's great beasts make their way to the riverfront. And in their wake, the buffalo leave a delightful feast for others. A family of banded mongoose takes advantage of the leftovers. They are foraging in the buffalo dung for beetles and the other insects it attracts. Of the 20 mongoose species living in Africa, banded mongooses live in the biggest packs. Extended families of 35 individuals or more. In such big families, keeping order is important. The family is led by the most experienced senior pair. An individual's temperament also plays a role. Born leaders rise to the top of the pack with time. And these high-ranking individuals get the first pick at the buffet. leaves the safety of his pack and ventures down to the water for a quick drink. Buffalo need to drink twice a day, and Chobe's herds have come down to the river for their afternoon tipple. These mighty bovids are not territorial, but roam large home ranges in huge herds often numbering into the thousands. But not all buffaloes live in big herds. This old timer has been forced into a lonelier existence. But in Chobe, you're never truly alone. a ride on the old bull's back. But there's more to this relationship than just freeloading. The food's good too. 
The egret is catching insects kicked up by the buffalo. 40% more than if it hunted alone. Forced out of the herd by younger dominant males, old bulls like this are called Daga boys. Daga is a widely used African term for mud. Egrets aren't the only bird benefiting from the Daga boys. Yellow-billed oxpeckers are also getting in on the feast. But instead of grabbing at insects that fly out of the grass, these birds pick the ticks directly off the buffalo's back. Parasites carry disease, so the buffaloes benefit from the oxpeckers' tick removal service. And they don't just stick to buffalo. Kudu also make good hosts. A small herd of kudu has come down to the river. Kudu are highly social. Females in particular form long-lasting bonds. And unlike young males, they stay with their herd their whole lives. Kudu bulls sport the longest horns of all antelope. Accounting for their curves, each of his horns can measure almost six feet. Kudu are browsers and get most of their water from the leaves they eat. But in the dry season, when the plants lack moisture, they come down to the river to drink. <laughs> this young male's horns have some growing to do before they reach the length of his father's. Down at the water's edge, the kudu share the drinking room with a troop of baboons. Chakma baboons can live in almost any African ecosystem. From deserts to forests, this adaptable primate thrives. But however versatile, baboons are still tied to water because they need to drink every day. So the troop stays close to the water's edge. Like all primates, baboons are social animals. And the social glue in this family comes from mutual grooming. It's not as simple as, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Baboon society is highly regulated. The higher up the pecking order you are, the more grooming you receive. When the river is in flood and water is scarce elsewhere, Chobe is packed with animals and different species rub shoulders at the water's edge. And jostle for space in the shade. Baboons and impalas are equally wary of predators and both keep a constant vigil of their surroundings benefiting from each other's company. 
and vigilance is key when one of Africa's most formidable hunters lurks in the river. Nile crocodiles have remained unchanged for some 70 million years. His powerful jaws are packed with over 60 razor-sharp teeth. A fully grown 19-foot crocodile can easily take large animals like antelope and baboons. But when they're little, young crocodiles prey on small invertebrates, moving on to fish and other reptiles as they grow. Crocodiles have slow yet efficient metabolisms and can survive up to a year without eating. They are ectothermic or cold-blooded and rely on the heat of the sun to warm up. But basking in the sun comes with the risk of overheating. With jaws wide open, water evaporates from the thin skin lining the mouth and cools the crocodile. With temperatures regularly soaring over 85 degrees Fahrenheit, even in the winter, Chobe's inhabitants must keep their cool. And marabou storks have one of the most bizarre ways of chilling out. They excrete on their own legs. This stork's legs are actually jet black, but they appear white because of the powdered uric acid left behind when their droppings evaporate. Not only does this evaporation cool the blood, but the bright white also reflects the sun. Chobe is a wildlife magnet, but crowds mean competition for food and space. And getting a leg up above the rest is key in this landscape. The tallest animal in the world, the giraffe, can reach the leaves on the top branches where most others can't. They avoid competition with Chobe's other browsers, like Impala, elephant and kudu. Tough lips and prehensile tongues delicately pick the juiciest leaves from between the thorns. Two bulls are sizing each other up. They are fighting for dominance and access to mates. As the blow comes in, the giraffe makes a small jump to absorb some of the impact. He can't swing his huge neck and jump at the same time, so the duo seems to take turns. So far, this is just a friendly sparring match, but these fights can cause serious injury.
Having drunk their fill, the elephants head off to feed. They're crossing the river to get to an ancient feeding ground on the other side. If they don't want to get left behind, the calves need to jump in and keep up. Despite their massive bulk, elephants are excellent swimmers and can swim across entire lakes or long stretches of river. Their multi-purpose trunks double as snorkels. Each day, the herd moves between the river and their favored feeding sites. The whereabouts of these sites is ancient knowledge. But for the youngest in the herd, this is all new. They still have much to learn. While some animals have to travel through the water, others can walk across it. This male African jacana's widely spread toes dissipate his weight, allowing him to stride atop the floating lily pads. He's feeding on insects on the surface. But he's keeping an eye open because he's looking after the kids. And a water monitor's lurking nearby. He's essentially a single dad. Jacanas are polyandrous which means females mate with many males. And so once she's laid her four eggs, she walks away from any further parental responsibility, and the rest is up to him. Luckily for Dad, the chicks are precocious and for the most part tend to look after themselves. By late afternoon, the giraffes have eaten their full. Almost 90 pounds of leaves and are moving to the water to drink. Easier said than done. Long legs and necks are ideal for high-level browsing and fighting, but they make things a little awkward at the water. They can't reach the ground when standing upright. So they spread their legs wide to reach the water. Even the herd's shortest member needs to overcome this problem. Lowering their heads from a height of 16 feet, however, could give them a serious head rush. To cope, giraffes have a special network of blood vessels in the upper neck, 
called the Riti Mirable, which equalizes blood pressure as it flows to and from the brain. As the elephants arrive at their evening feeding spot, the resident python gives the herd a wide berth. She's more than 13 feet long and tastes the air by flicking her tongue. A transparent scale called a spectacle permanently covers her eye instead of an eyelid. Pythons are constrictors. She slowly squeezes the breath out of her prey with each exhale it makes. With no oxygen, the victim dies from a heart attack. Special scales around her mouth are heat-sensitive pits capable of detecting warm-blooded prey, even in the dark. It's her secret sixth sense. Outside of Chobe, where they are not protected, large individuals like this are rare because humans hunt them for their skin. But this female's only concern for now is the elephants who are busy re-landscaping her riverside home. Chobe's elephants have small tusks compared with the great tuskers in East Africa. This is because the soils here lack sufficient micronutrients such as sodium and calcium necessary for ivory growth. Some individuals lack tusks altogether. But this doesn't stop them from causing havoc amongst the trees. This herd has traveled hundreds of miles to feed on Chobe's floodplains. As the rains return to the surrounding drylands, they'll head off once more on their journey across the great plains of southern Africa, constantly in search of water and food. But they'll be back with a new generation ready to be taught the ways of Chobe. The mighty Chobe River winds through the parched landscape of northern Botswana. Flooded by distant rains during the dry season, it's the only water for miles around. And with the water comes great herds and mighty flocks. Animals of all shapes and sizes thrive along its banks. 
attracted by the glut of food. It's a spectacle celebrated across the continent. When the Chobe is in flood, this water wonderland truly is the river of plenty.